One of the most haunting and troubling stories of the New Testament is that of the killing of the innocent in Matthew chapter 2. It is a story of when Herod found that he had been deceived by the wise men, or the magi, as, as they are sometimes called, ordered the killing of every male child under the age of two in and around Bethlehem in an effort to get rid of the new king that had been forecast by the star that the wise men followed. He was, of course, unsuccessful as Joseph and Mary and Jesus escaped into Egypt. In researching this particular passage, I ran across a story that I will share with you. Once upon a time, there was a couple who attended the same church. They attended the same church for years and years and years, and, and as providence would have it, they fell in love and decided to get married. The whole church celebrated because the couple had never been married before, and they were getting along in years. A couple years later, the church was excited again because the couple announced that they were expecting a child. With the help of fertility drugs, the wife was able to carry a child, but not just one, but two children. They were to be twins. Well, the joy turned into sorrow, for when the twins were born several months premature, the best medical science could do was not to save those children. They each died, having lived for only about an hour, but long enough for their mother and father to hold them in their arms and to give them a name. Abraham Joseph and Sarah Mary, symbolizing their own faith in God. So on a day in which they were supposed to be celebrating or planning a baptism with their minister, they were instead planning a funeral. They had one special request, that at the end of the service, a special song be played. The minister was surprised, but went along. On the day of the funeral service, the church was filled with fellow parishioners, neighbors, friends, and one could see the grief etched on everyone's face. After the benediction, Suddenly there appeared, there sounded through the church a song, the raspy voice of Louis Armstrong singing, It's a Beautiful World. And the man stood before his wife with his arms outstretched, and she fell into his arms, and in perfect ballroom position, they danced. They danced across the chancel area because they knew that this world has tragedies in it, that mysterious things happen, things that are inexplicable. But they also knew that there's absolutely nothing, nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing in this world or the next that can separate God's love from us. One has to wonder why Matthew included the slaughter of the innocent in his story of Jesus' birth. I believe it was in part because this world is a broken place. And God came into this world in order to save it. God became incarnate in the son of Mary and Joseph because the world could not save itself. In the Gospel of John, there's a well-known passage in which in John 3.16, Jesus says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. But there's also a 17th verse. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it, that the world might find life through him. In the midst of tragedy and disappointment in this world, in the midst of brokenness, I hope the one thing you remember is that God's love will never let you go, that God's love is stronger than anything this world can give us, and that for those loved ones who have completed their lives before us, whether they be long or short, that there is a day of reunion. I'm Forrest Crummel, the minister at First Federated Church. If you have found this time together to be helpful, I invite you to like this message and to share it. But in any event, 
May the love of God that will never let you go, the peace of Christ that passes all human understanding, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that knits us together as the body of Christ here on earth, may these three things dwell in your hearts so that you may produce the fruit of God's kingdom every day of your life.